Hey everyone, either welcome back or welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I want to talk about what pain is like with IIH and migraines. So before I get into any more details, time for the intro. So before I get going here, I may look actually quite exhausted today, and the reason for that actually is because I stayed up a little bit too late last night. I actually had the chance to watch the Northern Lights. Now, they weren't as strong as what they could be, but I was able to capture some really awesome pictures. I will put one actually right here, but the other ones you can actually see on my Twitter account. To see the Northern Lights, you actually have to stay up quite late a lot of the times. Now, for me, actually quite late is like 11 p.m. So I was awake until that actually 11.30 out of the house, and then I didn't get to sleep until quite a bit after that. That's kind of what I wanted to share about that. I don't want to get too much into that right at this point in time because this video is actually going to be quite packed with information, so let's just get right into it. I like to describe pain the same way the headaches and fatigue and other symptoms that I get that come along with IIH and migraines. So they come in waves, they often are unpredictable, hard to plan anything around. It can come on suddenly without warning. There's also some visual ways that I can try and showcase what the pain is like. Now, because I think pain is subjective, what I describe as a 5 out of 10 and what I can do with a 5 out of 10 is going to be completely different than somebody else who describes their 5 out of 10 with IIH and migraines. So don't take this scale as something that can be applied even across other chronic illnesses. I wouldn't even apply this to other people who have IIH and migraines. Some of us have way higher pain tolerances than others. Some of us can find different ways around pain, have different ways of managing pain, whether it be with medications or other ways of managing pain, such as like with meditation. There's just so many different factors that factor into how well a person handles pain. But I think doing this video is important because it might give you a place to start. I'm going to use a similar type of scale though in two different ways to try and illustrate my pain. One is a chronic pain scale, the other is an acute pain scale similar to what you'd be asked if you were going to the ER. The worst pain I have ever experienced is the pain that I experienced after I had my lumbar puncture and the pain that came actually after that point when I had the leak after the lumbar puncture. I will never ever forget that type of pain. I have never felt a pain like that before and I don't know if anything will be comparable until the point where I have kids and experience labor and I've never been through that myself. I've never been through labor. I can't compare the two but I'm guessing that I won't experience pain ever like that again until I do go through something like that. When I compare pain on a scale, that experience is what I'm comparing to. I've broken four bones now and nothing compares to the pain I had when I had that CSF leak and needed the blood patch. For those of you who experience CSF leaks from whatever the cause or reason might be, my heart goes out to you guys because that pain that I had after my lumbar puncture and had low pressure is, I can't even compare it. The amount of pain that I experienced those couple of nights when I was in the ER for more than 15 hours, I don't think I'd ever be able to describe that well enough to somebody, even if I had to. Now I'm going to do a comparison of chronic pain versus acute pain 
and talk about the different scales and the different points that I want to mark and what they all mean. So I'm going to start with chronic pain. On a scale of 1 to 10, 0 meaning nothing, 10 meaning the most it can be, 5 being in the middle. This is what I have as describing what this is like. So this pain scale is similar to that functionality scale that I've talked about before with pain. And I'm pretty sure that I've used this scale to talk about pain in the past as well. At five, which is right in the middle, this is similar to my functionality of five. So this means that some activities are affected, but I can sometimes continue doing things like a workout if it's light intensity but there are some activities affected at a level of five it's getting up into the seven eight range where workouts are no longer possible because there's too much pain although to be honest pain really doesn't stop me actually if i'm being honest with all of you workouts tend to help pain they might generate some acute pain if my head is feeling worse because I notice a little bit more pounding with regards to pain when I try and do a workout, but it's usually not enough to stop a workout unlike when I have something like dizziness. 10 means absolutely no activities, not able to get out of bed, in so much pain, over-the-counter medications are not even close to touching it. I would say that's the case at about an eight and a half or a nine. I don't honestly know if I've ever can rate myself on a 10 with the chronic pain scale because to be honest with you most of my chronic pain sits around that three to four mark where it's noticeable it's there it's something that if I pay attention to yeah it's a problem but because of my work with meditation and the fact that I'm so busy all the time it actually gets pushed down to more of a two, even at a three or four, because I've learned how to manage pain. Now, I'm not saying that meditation is going to work like that for everybody, because it takes so much work, so much dedication, but I honestly highly recommend that you give it an honest shot, because if you find a non-drug way of managing your pain and even helping to a certain point, I think it's better than nothing. I noticed that positivity towards helping pain kind of as a side benefit is what I like to call it. So when something is a positive, I call it a side benefit instead of a side effect where something is negative. Now getting into the acute pain. So this is exactly pretty much like what they would ask you. Rate your scale pain on a scale of one to 10 right now of exactly how you're feeling when you go to the ER. Zero meaning no pain whatsoever. 10 being, this is pain unlike I've ever experienced ever before in my life. At five, you start to notice there's a little bit of pain. When it comes to acute pain, I don't notice it really until it gets to the five to seven range. Seven to eight is where it can be when I start to want to go like this I want to grab my ice pack. I feel like I should probably take some over-the-counter medication, at least try it. I rate my 10 comparing to that of the way I feel after my lumbar puncture. And no migraine or IIH headache has ever come close to the feeling that I was that day. Or I guess those two nights. It's been, if I can compare it, an eight and a half to a nine on that scale at my worst IIH headache. So the ones that had the ears just a pounding. At a 10, obviously you'd be likely going to the emergency room. And because this would be a pain where I'm just like, do I have a leak? Because that's the only time I've ever experienced any pain like this. And obviously no medication is going to touch the, that at this point. So the only thing I'd be able to do is go to the ER to get help. I've never gone to the ER for migraine or IIH headache pain, but I think the ER point would come at about a nine. When my pain gets to about an eight acute level, or it's been consistently about six, six and a half on the chronic pain, scale level and functionality where I can function for a significant period of time, 
This, you'll often see me have tears just streaming down my face because number one, it's quite painful, but number two, I get really emotional when I'm sick and not feeling well. I also get really emotional when I'm dealing with a lot of pain. It's just the way I am. So if you see tears streaming down my face or if I'm overly em emotional, like more than normal, even though I don't seem like I'm frustrated, it could be that I'm trying my best to hide pain that I'm going through. Two to three on the chronic pain scale means pretty much normal. That's pretty much where I function normally. This applies to the functionality scale. Two to three is where I function normally. This means nothing's really affected. I can notice it's there if I pay attention to it, but through meditation and other w ways of basically ignoring it, I'm able to make it go away pretty easily. Just because somebody isn't complaining about pain, it doesn't mean that they're not going through it. So I'm better at hiding pain than a lot of people realize. And just because I'm not complaining about it, it doesn't mean it's not something I'm experiencing. If I'm not talking about it, it's likely because I don't want to talk about it. If you are enjoying my content, please feel free to subscribe. When you subscribe, you actually help me reach more people with IIH and migraines. And it also allows us to help raise more awareness for IIH and migraines as well. Remember that it's also completely free. When you hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming future content. If you enjoyed this particular video, be sure to give it a like. If you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow. And as for now, that's it for today. Bye everyone.